To the rest of the world, Jennifer Pan was a grieving daughter, the survivor of a horrible home invasion that left her mom, Bick, shot dead. And her dad, Han Pan, in a coma, fighting for his life. No, 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 no. The gunman shove Bick and Han to the basement. He orders them to turn around and throws a blanket over their heads. Then, five gunshots pierce the night. For some reason, they spare Jennifer's life. But police were beginning to wonder if the young woman with the angelic voice was really the devil in disguise. Cops have a lot of questions, too. One of the biggest. We were you know, concerned about how she could make the 911 call with her hands tied behind her back. And she had a flip phone. She did. Making it even harder. Yes. So investigators bring Jennifer into police headquarters for a demonstration. I want to see how you could physically get your phone out of your waistband. We're obviously going to need to know that. It's very important. I, we know you made the phone call, but questions are going to obviously raise is that if my hands are bound and I'm against the railing, how do I talk to a 911 operator? At first, Jennifer appears hesitant. Put this in the side that you believe it was in. Great. Turn around so that only you're looking away from me. You're looking exactly like, now here is where the banister is. Put your hands back behind your back, exactly how you remember they were. OK, now, and the, are you restrained from movement? How far can you move your hands from the banister? They tied my upper arm. Yes. Around the banister. Yes. But my hands were bound together. She says the robbers used a black shoestring to bind her arms. So your hands bound together, and this is the arm that's the, the strings wrapped around against the banister? Mm -hmm. OK, so now how can you get to the phone? And how do you make the phone call? 911. Mm -hmm. And do you talk down like that? Yes, I'm yelling at the phone like this. But cops thought Jennifer wasn't the victim, but the mastermind behind a fake home invasion, hiring three hitmen to kill her parents. One flaw in her plan, she never expected her father to survive. What did the father say happened? Han Pan uh, said that he saw his daughter come downstairs uh, and was unbound, um, speaking in a friendly manner to a white guy. Now Jennifer Pan uh, becomes a suspect. With Han's stunning accusation against his own daughter, cops bring Jennifer back in for questioning. All you have to do is tell me that you were involved, right? You know it. We know it. It's plain as day. I'm 100% correct here. Jennifer finally cracks. She says she's ready to tell Detective Bill Gates the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But it's not what anyone was expecting. You told these guys to come and kill you? Jennifer says she arranged for a hit all right, but she was supposed to be the target. It was supposed to be you. Because I didn't want to be here anymore. Suicide by proxy. Jennifer claims she couldn't deal any longer with her overly protective parents. She wanted to die. She uh, said that uh, she failed uh, multiple times when she tried to commit suicide. So she decided this would be the way that she could meet her fate correctly. Cops cuffed Jennifer on the spot. Unfortunately for Jennifer, no one bought the she wanted to die argument, especially the jury. Jennifer, her boyfriend, and two of the gunmen were convicted and sentenced to life in prison.